What's happening, Cucumber Squad? Right, man, who are showing you bullfighting? Now, I've already done this one, right? It was a paid request by Haza Sahaj, right? She actually uh, paid for the first request, which I put on Instagram because it got blocked on YouTube. Um, incredible song by Who are showing you. Um, and I broke it down and I was very happy by the end of the song I actually got I got I, I got I got the message essentially I got the message um, and then uh, she sent me another one and paid for it again um, um, didn't have to but I appreciate it thank you so much for supporting the channel she sent me another one saying this one won't get blocked on YouTube uh, and she paid it again so uh, apparently this is a different video um, that we're reacting to. So I've already heard the song, I've already interpreted the song, we're gonna see what, which one, the, what this is about, and then obviously I'll talk about it a little bit. I'm leaving the link down below to my um, Instagram, uh, my IGTV, the link to the actual original video that I did, so where I actually broke down the entire song. So you guys can go and see my thoughts there, and uh, let's see if we can add any additional thoughts here. So once again, man, uh, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. You really do support the channel so much, like even in the live streams and everything. I, I appreciate all, all the love and support, man. Um, and she's from my, my home country, Portugal. So um, I appreciate it, man. Uh, anyway, let's get into it, man. Who are she you? Bullfighting. The song is absolutely incredible. Let's see what we got over here. So this is like this is actually like um, an actual CGI video I can see now, right? That actually almost looks like the Colosseum. I'm not entirely sure if that's intentional, but that almost looks like the savagery of humanity all the way back to the Romans, like the Colosseum. But then also playing into like the bull and the bullfighting, which is pretty insane. <laughs> I just want to see if there's CCs on this one. I've checked, but I don't know. No, there's no CCs on this one. I apologize, I apologize guys. I'll take this back. Um, but again, I'm leaving the link down to my IGTV. I'm going to explain basically what the gist of this is, right? If you guys don't want to go and watch my video on IGTV, I will explain the gist of it as we go through it, right? I don't want to make the video too long because I have broken this down. It was like a 30 minute vi uh, long video. So I did break it down in depth. Um, I'm just going to add whatever I feel uh, uh, needs to be added in this one. Let's go. See, this is like Colosseum. That's not a bullfighting ring. It's, he's connecting the Colosseum. Very, very clever from a CGI perspective. So guys, whoever hasn't actually watched this, with the rapping part over here, he's basically painting a story. He's painting a story between man and beast, so man and the bull, right? And it's actually a very, very vivid, very elaborate story. It's brilliantly done, very poetic in terms of like the savagery of man and what they do to animals. And in this case, he actually uses the bull as the analogy in terms of he's taunting this animal as they do with the spears on the back, right? And literally, and everyone, when he says, uh, uh, da, 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 eh, he's basically saying follow. So the crowd just follows and they all just cheer watching an animal suffer, watching an animal uh, die. So that's basically the gist of it. <laughs> this over here is super clever. I apologize. I'm trying not to pause, but I just want to explain because this wasn't in the last video because the last video was a live performance. This is absolutely brilliant because he draws that correlation between um, the beast, which is the bull, the actual living bull, and then the, um, um, uh, you know, humanity in terms of the human being, which is also a beast, but a beast in a different way, almost robotic. I love the fact that he's portrayed the human being here as robotic, but still with the bull head. Like he's got like the bull uh, um, sort of painted on his face. So basically we don't even think anymore. We're just conditioned to go out and do things in a robotic fashion because it's, entertain it's entertaining or it makes money or things like that. We have no heart anymore. It's almost mechanical. It's very clever that he made the matador a robot. 
right? They're like picturing human being savagery in our society, human being savagery towards animals doesn't come from a place of heart. It's just, it's mechanical. You know, we find that it's almost like it's programmed in us. I, I like that. <laughs> Brilliant. Look at the crowd. Look at the crowd. Look at the, the crowd. Also, I love the fact that he's actually done the crowd almost as two dimensional, just black cloths with smiling faces. Right? There's no depth to them. Right, and he's painting them in, a, in in like a very very sort of dark light. Like these guys are all pretty much the same sheets; they're covered in darkness, right? And their their faces on the outside are all just smiling um, because they are thrilled by cheap entertainment, right? And that's what makes up the masses. That's what makes up humanity today. Right? We just cheer for anything. We don't think about anything anymore. We've almost got that mob mentality that watching somebody suffer is cool. And you even see it in like with normal human beings. Like if there's something happening on the road, instead of actually immediately dropping everything and going to help somebody, what do people do? They take out their phones to film it because, you know, if I could put this on the internet, you know, this can go viral. It, it, we've become sick. You know what I mean? I like that. I also like the triangle over here, the base over here. I'm not entirely sure if he's trying to allude to like the Illuminati or if he's just talking about the triangle with regards to a pendulum swing, right? Where it's almost like that society, it's almost predictable in terms of like how society sways, essentially. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to go with the Illuminati the Illuminati perspective over here, where it's all about money and it's all corporate and it's all about uh, um, uh, uh, we robotic because we live in a materialistic world and we're all about cheap thrills. See where he shows the heart. The heart of, but that's the heart of the beast because humanity has lost their heart. Very clever. I also love the fact that he's done the actual bull, the bull being killed, and that kind of thing, almost like drawing, like it's been painting, right? It's kind of portraying what humanity sees as art. We see violence as art. We see suffering as art, right? But the way he portrays it is that these creatures are beautiful as art is beautiful it should be our art to preserve these creatures but humanity has twisted that and distorted that and said killing and watching these creatures suffer has become our art okay Part, that part in the actual uh, uh, song is actually very, very powerful because that's exactly where he draws the correlation. He draws the correlation to man and beast in that particular part where he says that, um, you know, humanity's become reckless. It's become reckless with their feelings. They've become like where there should be some softness, where there should be some fragility, where there should be some heart, right? It just comes to show our soul, our soul can go either way. And I've said this before in many other reactions where I've said, you know, in every single human being, in every baby that is born, you can either get a Hitler or a Mother Teresa. It depends how you nurture and how you bring that child up, right? You can destroy its soul or you can, you can make its soul enlighten other people. You could make that soul shine so bright that it can't be missed. And he kind of paints that. So he kind of shows that our souls can be reckless. Like we find these kind of things where we, we, we find cruelty to animal, 
to animals or, you know, sort of like watching a bull suffer to its death. We take that as a sport and then we judge it by, oh, well, that's well, that's tradition. And the thing is, the craziest thing about that is that even when you are speaking, I was speaking to people in Spain about this because they said, oh, are you going to watch it? And I said, absolutely, I will not go watch it. I do not condone any sort of violence or or harm to animals. So there's no fucking way, ways you will see the color of my money in something like that. And the way... It's specifically very old school conservative mentalities will be like, please, man, it's a Spanish tradition. I'm like, I don't care if it's a Spanish tradition. It's a tradition that shouldn't exist. I don't care. So the way they justify things is also a bit ridiculous where they say, well, it's been it's been a tradition for you know how many years now? I don't care how many years it's been a tradition. Like literally watching animals suffer to their deaths and literally sticking them with spears in their backs. And you find that as a you find that as a joyful tradition. That's not a joyful tradition. What's wrong is wrong. I don't care how many years it's been around. Know what I mean? Imagine we literally sit there and we say, Yeah, well, we killed in my tradition, you know, we kill everybody under the age of fifteen, we kill as a tradition. You know, that's our tradition. Know what I mean? That we make them suffer and then we kill a human being, right, under the age of 15. Like, and it's just a tradition in our culture. And it's gone on for centuries. You know what I mean? Does that make it right? Does that make it right? No, it doesn't make it right at the end of the day. So I even told them I can draw the line at the matadors with the cloth, right? If they're going with the cloth, you're enraging the bull a little bit. And then he's missing you. He's missing you. He's missing you. Cool. You had your entertainment. The bull goes goes back inside unscathed unharmed right but to go there with horses and stick and stick uh, um, um, spears into the bull's back until the bull eventually like cannot stand on his own four feet anymore and then he, he, he dies and he suffers to death and people cheer and they feel that this is a thing you're pretty twisted and I don't give a fuck what your tradition is essentially so anyway let's carry on <laughs> Now it carries on to the story. So just before, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to pause after this. I've pretty much explained the majority of it. Um, when he's actually rapping, he's actually p painting the story. He's actually telling you the story as if it's like happening live. So he tells you the story of the bull and the matador as if he's like narrating it live. And then when he goes into the actual choruses, that's where it's the enlightenment. He kind of detaches from the actual story and he tries to paint the enlightenment of, you know, humanity and how savage we are. So he detaches himself from that narration and he goes into a more deeper, more um, emphatic sort of uh, um, st uh, uh, storytelling where it's all about enlightenment. He detaches away from that and then he goes back into storytelling. This is what I really loved about the way he constructed the song it's very poetic very brilliant very cleverly done let's carry on i'm not going to pause that much because i've pretty much explained most of it that because it's, it's very clever because i told you already he, he draws the correlation between man and beast and beast is man so it's basically saying that there's no difference between us like a beast which is like primitive and can be savage a bull can be savage it's that that same innate sort of savagery lives within us as well the only thing is that we can be brought up to rationalize these animals can't be brought up to rationalize so we should be in a position to know better right and yet we don't essentially but i like the fact that he depicts the two pretty well as if we both belong in these arenas we both belong in the arena the fact that he's actually even that whole arena he made it look very much like the coliseum is that this sport goes all the way back is that we treated each other like this right the gladiator days where the you know in the roman times where gladiators used to fight each other to the death essentially so we were entertained by these cheap thrills going back centuries. We we're able of to do that, 
right? But then to come into the 21st century and to still have this, to still see this from humanity, from people who are, let's say, majority, the, the majority are partially educated, right? We should know better. You know, we should know better. Why are we still the same beasts in these arenas? You know, it's clever. it's sad it is absolutely sad what we have done to animals on this earth and i mean we're talking about bulls over here but this is obviously this is just it's it's a depiction of what we do to all animals what humanity does to all animals it's not just about bullfighting it's how we treat animals as a whole right and even if we are eating them we are so inhumane with them like even in farms and the way we the way we pack them in there the way it's all about just mass producing um, as quickly as we can. And if it means the animal suffers, that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? In most cases, these industrialized uh, um, sort of like slaughterhouses don't even at least kill the animal humanely. You know what I mean? It's, it's actually made to just suffer. If it saves money, it's okay. Let the animal suffer. That's the way we are that's where we become this is only a drop in the ocean of what we do not see right we are literally fishing ourselves out the fucking oceans we are literally destroying ecosystems we we are we butchering and annihilating um, um animals for consumption at an absolutely enormous rate and we're not doing it humanely the way we treat just normal animals every day for pleasure as well is a joke the rhino poaching in south africa is another one right for just like literally killing it letting it suffer because you want to steal the horn for ivory right to make medication in china that does not work and it's all just fallacies it's just it's a joke what humanity has done to this world and what have we've done to animals i have said if we ever have to see our judgment day by some great power or some grand uh, 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 um, sort of god that is up there if we have to be judged by what we've done to animals, we will burn in hell eternally. Like, we, not a single one of us deserve to go to fucking heaven. Like, we'll burn in hell eternally. And I mean, what we have done to animals, and even if you have, we haven't done it ourselves, us looking away from it, because it's like what you know, what you don't see. And it is, we're all guilty of it. No, I mean, I, I don't want to see that. So I, I don't, because it hurts too much, right? And uh, the truth is that it's meant to hurt. It's meant to hurt because what we're doing is wrong. Like what we're doing is wrong, but anyway. Absolutely beautiful. Forest burning to the ground. This is what humanity has done, man. What was that, for, that uh, forest fire in Australia where half, a, I think it was half a billion, half a billion animals died in that forest fire. Half a billion billion were burnt alive in that forest fire we have do nothing but destroy 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 and what we build today we only build for our own entertainment for our own luxury for our own pleasure 
We don't take into consideration the environment anymore. We don't take into consideration ecosystems anymore. We don't take anything into consideration anymore. We literally say, if that's going to make money, don't care. Pillage. Pillage. It's going to make us money. Right? But like Aora once said, one day when we've fished every single fish out the ocean, when we've killed every single animal, and when we've destroyed every single tree, we cannot eat money. Know what I mean? Let's go. This is it. This is who we are. This is who we are. Just robotic. Just robotic. Just robotic. And the craziest thing is that we're coming into a world where, you know, there's a lot of AI and things like that. So, of course, we're going to get personal robots and things like that. But we're, as we sort of sort of charter deeper into those waters, into the AI waters, right, we're going to get lazier and lazier and lazier and lazier because things become more convenient, more convenient, more convenient. And when we do get lazier and we start making everything in our lives more convenient to the point that we'll get our personal robots, we're replaceable. We're replaceable because there will no longer be any more original thought. There will no longer be any more individuality. You can see it today. You can see today how things are working even in, in all around the world, in the US, in the UK. There's no individualness into what anybody thinks anymore. It's all I follow one side or I follow another side. Like everyone has their lanes like they're sheep. Everybody's got their lane. And if uh, the reason I'm here is because I don't like them. But they don't stop to think, maybe, wait, wait a second. Maybe that side on this particular occasion makes a valid point. You know what I mean? So maybe like, you know, perk your head up, you know, put your ears up and say, wait a second. Like, I don't like that side, but maybe on this situation, like, let me let up some ground. Let me hear what you got to say, because it actually sounds reasonable. Even if it's something reasonable on the side, on the opposing side, people are like, no, no, I don't care. I don't care if it's reasonable. Uh, This is my side. I have to hate that side. Like, I've got to hate that side. Regardless if they do right or wrong, it doesn't make a difference. Regardless if I'm right or wrong, it doesn't make a difference. I've got, I've got to stick to the side. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm saying. Any of you can be replaced. Any of those people, I'm not saying you as in you, I'm saying any of those people who stick to those two sides vehemently without thinking outside the box and actually saying, wait a second, maybe, maybe let, let's, let's discuss this. Right? Because you, you actually have a point. Let me lay up some ground. Right? You're replaceable. You have no original thought. I can replace anybody with you because every single person will give me the same argument. And it's crazy because I even saw that in like the police video that I dropped the other day where it's like, this is wrong. There's occasions where I know that the police are right. And I've said that. I've like, I've looked at it and I've gone into it. And I said, well, wait a second. They pulled the gun out on the police. And police was correct in this one but in this particular instant the police was dead wrong you know what i mean they were dead wrong but no 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 there are still people that say no right because they will not let up ground to the opposition they will not let up ground to the other side right and that's how we've become as hum- as humans and i'm saying you're easily replaced we might as well have you as robots because you think the way that one thinks 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 what what dif- what difference is there to you or thousands others like you? You all think the same because you you can't step out of your comfort zone and say, "Well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Okay, guys, I know we I know we you know we stand for one thing, right? But uh, what they did over there was that right though? Like, let's just be honest. Like, was that right? Do we really have to defend this? You know, do we really have to defend an insurrection? You know what I mean? Like, uh, do we, do you know what I mean? Do we really, uh, let's play it on the other side. Do we really have to defend looting and rioting? Like, do we really have to defend that? You know what I mean? So that means stepping out of your comfort zone, jumping over that fence and maybe giving up a little bit of your own ground to understand the other side. But people won't do that. No, 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 no. Why? 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 What was so wrong about the insurrection? What was so wrong about looting? We angry. Yeah, but it's wrong. It's wrong. 
it wrong. And that's what I'm trying to say. Is that we've lost our humanity. We've become robots. We can't even, because of so much hatred, because we hate each other to such a degree, that we can't even open our minds anymore. We are replaceable. Every single one of like we can be replaced because nobody thinks for themselves anymore. No one has an original thought. You can place anybody in society in that exact same seat and you will get the same fucking argument. Anyway, let's carry on. Clever, what mask are you going to put on today? I like that. depicted society in that way right where even if the beast who is being harmed takes down one of their idols society will go and absolutely destroy that beast even not even thinking wait a second our idol our idol was making an animal an innocent animal suffer for no reason or let's say a person was making an innocent person suffer for no reason but he's our idol we follow blindly, right? This is what we do in society today. We just follow blindly. That's the guy I picked. And God, he can do fucking anything. Anything he wants. No, no, no. I agree with him. You can't stop back and make a distinction and say, whoa, 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 wait a second. That's why they say don't ever meet your heroes because you'll hate them. But I think in today's society, I think if people meet their heroes, I think they'll be even more emboldened. That saying doesn't even that saying doesn't even uh, um, hold any weight today anymore because back in the day where they said don't ever meet your heroes because you'll realize that you know they've got their flaws, right? That's when people were actually thinking rationally. Today people don't think rationally like that anymore. Today people will meet their heroes, realize that their heroes are fucking assholes, and yet still be like, yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. no. There's a reason why he's like that. No, but there is no reason. No, 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 no. Nah, this is what it's better than that guy. Yeah, but it doesn't mean it's right. You, know, you, you, you can't ever, ever come into a debate or an argument with me where your debate, the whole premise of your debate is saying that this side is better than him. You know what I mean? Well, pff, who would you prefer? This guy or that guy? No, no, no. They're both garbage. Don't compare two fucking, don't compare two, two items of garbage to me and then say, well, this is the lesser garbage, right? Come on, man. Have we, that, that's how we've divulged, like this is what we've gone to as a society, right? Is that we'll be like, well, you know, yeah, he's crap, but like, would you not rather not prefer this crap? No, I would just rather not prefer crap. How about that? You know what I mean? And this is what the crazy thing is that we don't make that distinction anymore. We're okay to settle for garbage. We're like, okay, we'll settle for garbage because, you know, this is the garbage I like. This is the garbage I like and that's the garbage I don't like, right? We don't want to really go above the pale and literally say, well, let's just get rid of both this fucking garbage and let's demand something better. Let's demand something better. Why, why, do, these, why do these two options have to be the two options? Let's get something better. You know what I mean? We don't. Do you know why we don't do that? Because that would mean going against your grain and go, going against your conservatism or going against your progressive your progressivism, whatever that fucking thing's called, your 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 progressive ideology. Oh, God forbid if we have to go against that. And then the conservatives, God forbid we have to go against you know our our grain a little bit. God forbid we have to be a little bit malleable to the other side. And both sides play like that. Both sides play like that, right? And then it's just just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then all we're doing is. We're watching people suffer and justifying, watching people suffer and justifying, watching people suffer and justifying. 
I mean, yeah, 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 we know, we know they're suffering. Yeah, but whose watch is that under? Whose watch is that under? Who cares whose watch is that under? People are suffering. Anyway, I, I see this kind of shit. Anyway, anyway, okay, let's just carry on. Now this part over here is actually, this is where he actually connects the entire story, is in this part over here, this last part over here. And it's quite aggressive and it's quite uh, hectic where he literally paints, he tells the whole story in terms of how humanity treats um, um, uh, life, how true humanity treats this earth, how humanity treats animals. He literally completely connects everything because from the beginning you can get a little bit confused because you like okay, stories about the bull and then he goes into this and that it's very poetic and that kind of thing and then you kind of make your own sort of assertions about it and then by the time you get to the actual end of the song he connects it all he connects it all in for you it's very cool again i'm leaving the link to the rg and uh, um tv and i explain it all there <laughs> this even in my previous reaction this guy's an unreal performer <laughs> Very, very clever how he ends this video where it's he's on the, everything's white, he's on a white platform and everything. There's just like a white void around him, which means to me, blank canvas, we should start again. We should start again and we should think about, you know, we're on the stage. We should literally wipe the slate clean and start again and look at this world differently. That's how I see it. Anyway. Brilliant. Love it. I love music like this. I love I love conceptual stuff like this. It's absolutely incredible. Again, this video went long again. I apologize, man. I really do apologize that it went long again. But as you know, man, when it comes to some things like this, it just gets me off on a rant and I apologize that I went off again. But anyway, let me just end this right here. I love you all, man. Please stay safe, please stay healthy. The link to my other reaction to this where I explain a bit more. Um, is in the description. Love you all. Stay safe, stay healthy. Catch you next week.